As we mentioned, search crews are again back over the southern Indian Ocean today looking for signs of Flight 370. And that includes ships and planes in this fifth week of the search now. ABC's Nikki Batiste went up with one of those crews and she has returned from Perth and she joins us now with some perspective. Hi there, Nikki. Thank you for joining us. Let's start with the mood on these planes. You were on the plane. You were also on the Ocean Shield. You spent a lot of time with the search crews. What's it like to be amongst the people that are looking for this wreckage? I think now the, there's cautious optimism and uh, we heard the, the Australian official in charge of this entire search say he's fairly confident they'll will find the aircraft and I think these crews you know there's been a lot of it's been a roller coaster of hope I think yeah. for them and for the families and they're just being very careful and you know on the plane there's a lot of excitement when they see anything but they're also aware it could be nothing. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about just the reality of being there. We hear about these roaring 40s, how crazy uh, violent this weather is, how far away from shore it is, how massive this boat is. Uh, do the pictures that are coming back to the, us folks sitting here do it justice? What's it like being there? The pictures do no justice. Covering the story at first on the ground, you know, was one thing, but when it got in the plane, we were on the plane for 11 hours, three hours just to get to the site, and then we searched uh for four hours, as low as 200 or 300 feet above water, which when you're on the plane, literally you feel like you can touch the water. You're so low. And the day we went out, we were covering an area the size of Connecticut, which is, is a large area. And, you know, the Ocean Shield, which I also went on for about an hour or two, is is massive. It's brand new. It's hi highly equipped with very sensitive equipment. And, you know, it's the crew I was out with said they'd never been a part of an operation so massive, 15 aircraft, you know, 14 ships, every, you know, everyone putting everything into this. Trying to solve the biggest mystery in human man or in mankind, which is what um, Angus Houston said recently. Um, lots of false alarms came out of this, and it must have been so difficult on the crews that were out there. But you were there with them on a daily basis, and you said it seemed like their mood declined rapidly during this search. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine what it was like for the families. For us, it felt like Groundhog Day every single day. What was it like for them? I think, you know, in the very beginning, there was a lot of hope. I know one of the first crews that we flew with thought, we're finding this plane. It was probably a weekend. And, you know, there were a lot of satellite images, which turned out to be white caps. When you're high up in a plane, you look down to the water, you see what looked like pieces that could be of a plane, but they're just water. So the, the hope sort of waned. And then um, in the recent days, you know, they, the frustration was there's a lot of trash in the Indian Ocean. And when I was out with the plane, you know, they'd see an object and they have to decide among themselves whether or not to take the time and go look at it and take a picture. So they were, they would get very excited. But they're also like, well, we've had so many false alarms. They don't want to get the hopes up of these families. And I think right now everyone's just being really careful about that. Let's wrap up with that thought. Now we have the latest best clue yet. Um, there really is a strong feeling this time. It's hard not to be incredibly optimistic right. when you're hearing what's coming out of this. How do you feel about those pings that we're detecting and the idea that we, we may find some debris soon? I think it's probably the most hope, as I said, that we have to date. And I think we just have to wait and see. Time is running out, so I think time is very crucial, and they're just trying to narrow down the search area. But hopefully, um, the crews will find the black boxes and some answers for these families. Absolutely. Thank you for that perspective, Nikki. We sure appreciate it. Nikki Batiste, thank you.